What's going on guys, unknown player here and today we've got an absolute ton of stuff to talk about and it's all the info from Bungie we're waiting for on how they plan on improving the game. So if you don't know, today was initially going to be the third and final reveal stream for the Curse of Osiris showing off some new gear and crucible maps, but Bungie probably figured out that after the last stream, people are more interested in hearing about the fixes to the end game than some new maps and gear. So instead they published a massive blog post with all the ways they're planning on fixing and hopefully improving the replayability, but we've got a lot to talk about today, some huge changes to exotics, even a look at some new ones from Curse of Osiris, three of coins returning, a small form of random weapon rolls, ranked crucible tokens, mods, and so much more. So as usual, I'm gonna summarize all the info while also giving my thoughts on what I like and don't like. And of course, as I go through, leave your thoughts in the comment section. I wanna know what you guys think of all this stuff, but let's get into the info. So like I said, there's quite a lot of little things mentioned and several parts of just all aspects of Destiny mentioned. But it's important to note these are split into three different kind of updates. So some of this stuff is going to be arriving on December 5th with the Curse of Osiris DLC. Some of it is going to be in a later patch on December 12th and other stuff is going to land in the new year. Quite a lot of the big overhauling things are going to be in the new year, so we don't know when that's going to be, hopefully sooner than later. But it's important to note some of these things are going to be arriving as early as next Tuesday on the 5th and some of them in a couple weeks or months from now. So one of these things which I'll go into detail in in a second is called Masterwork. So this is a new kind of category or rarity of legendary weapons. And these are specialized guns which have stat trackers, random rerollable stat bonuses, unique item tool tips, item detail descriptions, and some other things as well, which I'm gonna mention in a second. That is just part of it. There's also going to be improved vendor rewards. So adding ways for you to purchase items directly with legendary shards and tokens, and also a couple armor ornaments as well. In terms of incentives for challenging prestige activities, they're targeting a January update for those ones. Better rewards and replay value for strikes, adventures, and lost sectors. So in December, they're going to be adding the heroic strike players, which we know, and also more generous strike rewards, which is pretty ambiguous. I don't think they really mean strike-specific loot like Destiny 1. I think they mean actual like, more rewards than the chest, but we'll talk about that later in the video. And also more rewards for adventures and lost sectors. Those things aren't going to be in the December update, but the strike stuff will be. Now getting into arguably one of the biggest features of this entire blog post, that is going to be for the Crucible. They said they're still targeting early 2018 for private matches, which is kind of nothing new, we knew that already. But the big thing is going to be ranked PvP. They're moving it to the top of their priority list for next year to support the competitive community. So this is actually massive. Never in Destiny or Bungie history have they ever mentioned ranked play, ranked Crucible, some kind of ranking competitive mode. There's always been something a lot of us have wanted, but now they're officially saying it's at the top of their list and it will be coming sometime soon. Again, we don't know when, it's not going to be in December, but sometime in the new year, they're going to be working on hopefully introducing this ranked PvP mode. There's going to be better incentives for completing Crucible matches and also penalties for quitting competitive games, which is again much needed. We can expect that in the new year. There's going to be continued improvements to Iron Banner and Faction Rallies, including uniqueness of rewards. There's going to be changes to the mod economy, making it more interesting and impactful, which we'll talk about in a second. There's going to be ongoing improvements to exotics, including adjustments to reduce instances of duplication. So they'll be buffing the bad exotics, basically, and also a new system to reduce duplicate exotics, which we'll talk about again in this video. In terms of currencies and materials, players are going to be able to spend tokens and shards on vendor inventory, and Zert is going to have new items, and there's going to be an emote interface, which of course lets you select multiple exotic emotes if you want at the same time. That is basically the big kind of grand list of things that Bungie are working on in the near and distant future. But now I'm going to go into detail on a bunch of things actually arriving in December. So firstly, it's something which I think is probably the most important and definitely interesting things in my opinion. And this is making the loot more interesting. And it seems to be that feature Luke Smith was talking about in regards to making duplicates actually mean something. So this is going to be almost like a new rarity of legendary weapons, and this is called Masterworks. So these are going to be kind of like specialized versions of legendaries. These will be arriving on December 12th, and almost every single weapon, it seems, is going to have a Masterwork version. So what these do is have extra features, so tracking and displaying the number of kills you have with a weapon, so it's basically a kill counter or a stat track. Now, these Masterwork weapons are also going to generate more orbs for you and your allies on multi-kills. It's a pretty random perk, but that is going to be included for all Masterworks. And there's also on each of these weapons going to be a small pool of random perks that will drop on the weapon that are also re-rollable. So you can see this is the masterwork version of the good old Uriel's Gift, a slightly different UI. It's got a couple kind of gold bands in the purple and the icon has a gold glow on the bottom. So that's how you can tell this is a masterwork version. So you can see the icon on the left there, that is going to be to re-roll the actual perk. Right now it has 10 reload speed. Obviously it's a small pool, so I'd imagine it's pro stability, reload, handling, things like that, small things that affect the weapon. So it's a very small form of random weapon rolls, but not completely like Destiny 1. 
Now, how do you get these Masterworks versions? Now, these are going to drop from any source of legendary weapons for characters above 250 power. Any unwanted Masterworks can be dismantled into materials that upgrade existing legendary weapons into a Masterwork. So that is how you kind of solve duplicates. If you get a Masterwork you don't want or already have, you can dismantle it. And that's going to give you materials that help you upgrade a standard legendary weapon into a Masterwork version of that legendary weapon. Also, Raid and Trials of the Nine weapons have a very high chance of already dropping as Masterworks, and they have future plans to extend this into other gear and also expose your kill counts in more places like the Crucible kill screen. So when you get killed by someone, it's going to show this person's Euro's gift has killed like a thousand, ten thousand people, which is a cool little feature. So in terms of my thoughts, I think it's a very good step in the right direction. You guys know me, I'm a big fan of the idea of random weapon rolls. So I think it's definitely a good start. I would like to see it definitely a lot more improved, a lot deeper. I think the thing I want to know the most is how much these perks are going to affect the weapon. So 10 reload speed, we don't know how much that's going to affect it. I really, really hope it's not just a tiny little unnoticeable difference. I want it to be enough so you can customize weapons and have kind of unique builds for each gun. So I'm impressed. I really like the kill counter as well. And I definitely want to see a lot more from the system. So next up is a pretty big one and this is going to be on December 12th and this is to do with Xur and Exotic. So as you can see this is a new Xur inventory. We have the Fated Engram. So this thing is going to guarantee you an Exotic you don't already have. Obviously it is going to be expensive so these cost 97 Legendary Shards and you can only buy one of these from him every single week. So every week you're guaranteed one Exotic you don't already have to add to your collection which is pretty cool. Now you may also notice a new exotic hiding there on the end for the hunters and these are some exotic hunter boots coming in the Curse of Osiris. I've seen these and know what they do but I can't say it obviously but those are some new exotic hunter boots to look at. And then also something very controversial returning from Destiny 1 is three of coins in the bottom there as a consumable you can buy from him. They said they're going to be simpler than the old three of coins and they simply give you a boosted drop rate for any source for four hours that's how they work. So you pop one and then you have four hours of boosted drop rates for exotic engrams. There's going to be no obscure stacking mechanics and no need to reapply it after every boss kill and these cost legendary shards and you can have as many as you like. So in terms of my own thoughts I'm pretty happy with the idea of a fated engram and definitely much needed. I like how it's very expensive too because it kind of makes your currency a bit more meaningful so I do like how they're expensive but I'm not really a fan of the idea of three of coins. I think it's just added complication and kind of makes exotics even easier even though they are very very easy right now. So could do that three of coins but I like the fated engram personally. So next up is going to be armor ornaments. This is going to be arriving on December 5th. So this is some visual customization without losing shaders or mods. And these ornaments are going to be unlocked by objectives and they'll be permanently unlocked account wide, just like exotic weapon ornaments that always be there for you once you unlock them. So these are going to be for the following activities, Vanguard Faction Armor, Crucible Faction Armor, Charles the Nine, Iron Banner, Dead Orbit, Future War Cult, New Monarchy, and the Eater of Worlds Raid Lair set. So the next thing is going to be on December 12th, so the week after the update. And this is going to be the ability to purchase things directly from vendors now, which is definitely much needed. So you can use 10 tokens and 15 shards to buy something or use the random route and buy the engram, which you don't know what you're going to get. So in terms of the armor, those are always going to be present, so all five sets. And the weapons will be random, rotating each week. The faction that has them, as you can see now, he's got the sword. But that weapon is going to rotate, which is why it's got the little orange time icon on it. So getting these slots is going to be unlocked by claiming engram, so basically a ranking system, even though you can't see the rank. Each time you get one, that's going to unlock some new slots and you're going to get credit for engrams you've already collected. So it is going to be retroactive All your progress up until now. That's going to count and your stuff will already be there counted for you. So next up is a bunch of things for general investment. So the following is for December 5th. So firstly, Banshee the Gunsmith is going to be selling a random selection of mods each day that reset. So you can get a more guaranteed way of the kinetic counterbalance mods or anything else you're looking for if he's selling it on that day. And you can also dismantle rare mods and get gunsmith materials and a chance at legendary mod components. The Cryptarch is also going to sell legendary engrams for legendary shards now. The daily challenges are going to have reputation tokens increased across the board. K's treasure chests are still going to offer variable rewards but now guarantee at minimum a payout of destination appropriate reputation tokens. Strike is going to drop a larger amount of vanguard rep tokens which is good. The common planet materials which is like data lattice those are going to have their drop rates increased by 100% so you basically get double the stuff and also their values per token turning in is going to increase by 50% which is very good and also the rare ones are going to increase your rep by 250%. Now for some reason they're also going to increase the amount that you need to turn in to get an engram at destinations by 37% and the gunsmith by 50 which is pretty strange but that's a balance to it and also the leviathan raid tokens are going to be redeemed automatically instead of requiring a full clear before unlocking which I'm not really too sure why it seems like they're going to be automatically turned in but it's a pretty confusing one. 
Now, even more things coming on December 12th, Commander Zavala and Shax are going to sell these gift consumables for legendary shards, and these can be used for either strikes or crucible, and they're going to serve the following functions. So these are pretty interesting and funny sounding. You can get bonus rewards for everyone in the activity upon completion, friend or foe, and also award anything from faction tokens to a round of exotics for everyone in the match. So randomly, someone might pop one of these gift consumables and everyone, all the enemies and also friendlies, everyone gets an exotic engram, which is pretty funny. And they're also reducing the exploit safeguards on chest and resource nodes, which is very, very good to hear. So basically the punishments, the kind of lockouts. So instead of for farming, getting sometimes nothing, the worst you'll get is 30% of tokens and the drop rates will be normal. So that's a very good change. And also in the future, they're going to add some kind of visual indicator to show you when you're hitting a lockout so you can see what's going on, which again is very, very much needed. So yeah, like I said, a lot to talk about in this video. In terms of my overall thoughts, I'm quite impressed for the most part. I think it's nice to see Bungie adding a bit more depth, but is it going to solve all our problems and make the game perfect? Absolutely not. There's still issues, there's still going to be more issues, and a lot of the biggest things aren't coming until the new year. So it is going to be a gradual, slow process of constantly updating the game. But I just want to see a lot more of this. I feel like it took a lot of backlash and a lot of negativity to get this kind of a response from Bungie. So I hope they keep this up and constantly provide updates and not just when we're unhappy. But as always, any more updates and news, I'll be keeping you guys informed. But if you enjoyed it, this video would like to support the channel. Leaving a like rating down below would be greatly appreciated. I want to see your comments down below with all your thoughts and the things I've mentioned. I'm going to have more videos very soon with even more info that's coming out. So make sure you are subscribed if you aren't already. But in the meantime, you can click the image on screen to watch another video from me. And I'll see you guys in the next one.